What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Mission Driven Made podcast. This is your host and founder of the Mission Driven Made movement, Jacob Straub. If you're new today, what we do here at Mission Driven Made is impact people to lead a healthy and high performance lifestyle. And we do this through fitness and personal development. So if you're here for the first time today, uh, thanks for joining us. We are really excited that you are. And for the rest of you, I hope you have been enjoying this rebrand and uh, hearing a little bit more of the fitness side of things that we've been talking about. So really hope you guys are enjoying that. For today's episode, we have something a little bit different. And I feel as though it could help all of us out in at least a facet uh, or two of our life, especially if we're looking about our career, looking about or thinking about relationships or whatever that may be. I feel like it could help us out there. So what we are going to talk about today is what we can learn from Dave Chappelle. Now, before some of you out there start shaking your heads, because I know a lot of people have strong feelings about Dave Chappelle, I don't personally agree with many of the things that he says. And I wasn't one of the people growing up that listened to stand-up comedy. I actually didn't like it at all. I didn't really start listening to a little bit of stand-up comedy until <laughs> I met my wife. And she was uh, into it a little bit and asked me to watch certain specials with her. And I didn't want to do that at all. And then eventually, uh, one day, there was a comedian, a very big comedian uh, named John Chris that was going to be performing uh, at a local church. And my wife asked if I wanted to go. And we did. And I was rolling on the ground from laughter. It was one of the hardest I'd ever laughed before. So from that point forward, I became a little bit more open with stand-up comedy. But wasn't a Chappelle fan. It never really heard him too much besides any clips here or there. But the reason being why I'm bringing him up is after all this cancel culture that has seemed to be happening the last couple of years, which I despise, by the way, since the cancel culture has been happening, it made me more intrigued to learn about Dave Chappelle. So I ended up watching a few of his specials just to hear him speak and listen to the guy that people say is the greatest of all time when it comes to stand-up comedy. So a lot of the stuff he said, like I said earlier, I didn't necessarily agree with. Some of it wasn't funny. Some of it was hilarious. So it wasn't just the comedy in itself that really impressed me with Dave Chappelle. After listening to this man for maybe 20 or 30 minutes, I started realizing things about him that I had never thought before, or not that I wouldn't expect, but I just, I didn't realize it all. And I started to understand these certain things about him. So many of us could take lessons from that and apply these to, like I said, into our career, our life in general, our family, relationships, whatever it may be. So the first thing that I noticed with Dave Chappelle, and this, by the way, is one of my favorite things or favorite characteristics or qualities, traits, uh, skills, whatever you want to call it in a human being. And he is articulate. I noticed very early on with Chappelle, he was able to clearly and concretely convey his thoughts to people in a matter that it's easy to understand and digest. And just about everything he said that's how he felt. He was very articulate. Now, to be an articulate person, it's obviously communication. And this can apply to so many different career fields and just knowing how important it is to have a good sense of communication. Just about every career or field that I've been in has required a large amount of communication. So being articulate would help. Now, it also reminded me the of the first time that I can remember, or one of the first times, at least I'm sure there was times when I was younger, but one of the first times that I noticed someone was very articulate. Now, this feels like a few lifetimes ago, uh, but when I was in the fire academy for San Diego Fire Rescue, San Diego Fire Rescue back in the day, one of the instructors, his name's Captain Kevin Pendleton, and if you're listening to this, Cap, you're awesome. Thanks a lot. You're the best. So what I noticed with him and his teaching style 
it was a lot different than every other instructor. Now, let me give you a bit of background with what the Fire Academy looks like, at least in the beginning. So the first two weeks, what our day would look like, it was pretty simple. In the morning, we do PT or you know physical exercise. We get our butts kicked for a little while. And then the rest of the day, for the most part, we would be in the classroom to learn. So we would go over two to three chapters, and then immediately that would follow with two to three quizzes. So it's basically lecture, quiz, lecture, quiz. They were teaching us an abundance of information in a very short and compressed amount of time. And then we would have to get certain scores to stay in the academy. Now, anyways, for the most part, and with most instructors, when they were teaching us, and this might have been just my own personal thing, I probably learn a, a bit different than other people. I have a different learning process. And so when most people would teach, I felt like it was a waste of time. I would sit there and think to myself, this would be easier if I just read the chapter myself. That way I can read it over and over and over again and get more repetition to get it just ingrained in my mind. That was kind of my style. <laughs> I've kind of always, always done that. It's definitely not efficient, but for some reason, unless it's a very specific way that someone is teaching, I don't necessarily understand it right away without me getting my hands on it and studying for myself over and over. So that was with most of the instructors. And then one day the lecture was on a intricate and just a very, not a heavy topic, but a, a big chapter of our fire Academy book. And it was on what's called high rise operations. And this chapter, I thought it was going to be a pretty difficult one to learn and retain and then to do or be successful on the following quiz with that. So Captain Kevin Pendleton, the gentleman I just mentioned, he was our instructor that day. And for the very first time that I can think about, at least in my adult life, I didn't feel like I had to sit there and take notes or sit there and read the chapter 10 or 15 times to myself to understand the information. I remember putting my pen down because the way he was conveying the information made it click in my brain right away. And I never seen anything like that before. I remember mentioning it to some of my academy mates. And what I did find out later on, his previous career uh, was, uh, he was a teacher, a high school teacher, I think. So that totally made sense. So because of how articulate he was, I was able to understand the message he was giving me very clearly, and I was able to digest it and then be successful on that quiz. So it just reminded me of that and the importance it is in so many different career fields just to be articulate. Now, for some of you, if you remember when I had Jeremy Stallnecker on my podcast, he was on, let's see, a couple months ago. And Jeremy Stallnecker, for those of you that didn't listen to that episode, definitely go back and, and do so. Jeremy Stallnecker is a former infantry officer in the Marines. He was in the early 2000s, uh, mid 2000s, he was involved in the war and just absolute crazy story. He was also a pastor and then eventually became the, the founder and CEO of a nonprofit organization. But from the first time I heard him speak, it was the exact same way as uh, Captain Kevin Pendleton. As he was talking, I was so drawn into what he was saying because of how well he could articulate the information. Everything he conveyed made sense. It drew me in and I was able to completely understand the point that he was making. So that was, that was one of the first things that I noticed about Dave Chappelle that I thought was fantastic. Now, point two that I took away from Dave Chappelle, I feel like most of us could really use this skill as well. And he is a deep thinker and allows other people to be the exact same. Now, this reminded me of a recent course that I went through uh, a few months ago now, was it a few months ago? Yeah, maybe two months ago now, I went through a course called uh, the Transformation Specialist. And this is where I learned the art of behavior change. Um, I love psychology. It's just something I'm, I'm really into. And anyways, in this course, one of the main points that it was teaching you, if you're working with a patient or a client, is the term ambivalence. And I hadn't heard that term before, or at least I wasn't familiar with what it meant. And what ambivalence means is say you're sitting down 
with a client and they are telling you their specific goals that they have for the future. Now, are the current actions and habits, or their current habits and actions that they're taking right now, do those properly align with their future goals? If they do not, then your job as a coach is to show them their ambivalence, showing them that those two things don't match up. Now, I noticed halfway into Chappelle's comedy routine that he was doing this to me in a certain way. So what he does, he clearly articulates his topic, whatever, whatever it is he's talking about. And he brings certain issues up. Even if you don't agree with him, you could 100% disagree with what he was saying. But the way he brings it up, the certain issues that we have in society, it forces you to think deeper about that certain topic. Now, that is also something that I love in human beings. When people challenge me to be able to think differently, or not necessarily just differently, but think deeper about a specific topic. I always appreciate that so much. I feel it's so easy to teach people in life how to do something or, or what to do, telling people you know how to think versus letting them do that on their own. So I just feel like that's a very important skill uh, that we can learn to do. And what we can do and how we can apply this into our lives is to ask a lot of questions. That's kind of the starting point for that. So appreciate people that ask ask you a lot of questions. It makes you think more. It makes you grow. And overall, it just makes you a lot better. Now, a point number three is he views his job as a craft. Now, what I mean by that, a lot of people view their job or their hobbies as what they do as just that, just a job or just a hobby. It's just something that they show up and do. When I think of the word craft, I think of it being intentional with that job, with that hobby, with whatever it is. It's something that you intentionally try to improve on all the time. And I'm sure a bunch of you have heard to master a craft that you need to put, you know, generally speaking, 10,000 hours worth of time into that craft. So the first person I thought of was Kobe Bryant. So if you guys know Kobe Bryant's story, and you know, he's one of the, the greatest in, in history, he would sometimes wake up at two in the morning and go practice basketball. It was his craft. And he used a large amount of time every day to improve on that craft. Now, Dave Chappelle, I could tell, does the same exact thing. He views what he does as art and craft and that it's something that he can improve on. And by watching him for the first time, and probably for most people, you can tell he's been doing this for a very long time. So that's another takeaway for all of us looking into our career or our hobby. If we viewed it more as a craft, then we're going to approach it like we can improve. We're going to view it as practice or training with the ultimate growth, the ultimate goal of growing and getting better. So that's a point number three, viewing his career as a craft. Now, the last point, that I've learned from Dave Chappelle. Now, don't quote me on this. I'm not an apologist for Dave Chappelle by any means. I don't know every area of his life. I'm sure he's done some not great stuff. So this is just from the little I've known about him uh, the last couple of weeks or so is his integrity. So what I came to learn was back in the day when he was doing the Chappelle show, which I don't know if I ever watched. If I did, it was for seconds, but I, I never sat there and watched an entire show of uh, the Chappelle show. So I don't really know anything about it, but I was told as time went on doing the Chappelle show, he did not like how it was turning. He felt as though it did not match his personal values and what he believed in with what he was trying to do for that specific project. And eventually he walked away from 50 million dollars because he didn't value what they were doing on the show. 
Now that really remind me again <laughs> of the fitness industry. Now think of certain fitness influencers after they gain some popularity or some type of following on a social media platform. And you're going to see this all the time. So after they gain a certain following, gain attention, companies will reach out to them and ask for them to promote their products. So there's nothing wrong with doing that whatsoever. I, I'm not against that. But what I have noticed is some of these supplements aren't exactly what these companies say they are and don't follow through on their promises. Now, for example, you've probably heard me bash this a couple of times, uh, but companies that sell detox tea. <laughs> okay, so this fit fitness influencer gets attention, gains a following, and then starts marketing a product that they know doesn't work, or at least it doesn't live up to the hype that it claims. So just thinking about that, how easy it is for you know anyone to get wrapped up in something like that just to make a little bit more money. And thinking back how Dave Chappelle walked away from apparently $50 million. I know some of you might say, well, he was already wealthy and it's a different scenario. Yeah, that all may be true, but still at the end of the day, he did walk away for from, excuse me, $50 million. So that's uh, some of the few things that I learned um, from Chappelle. And again, like I said, I'm not an apologist for him. I'm not his number one fan. I just took interest in him after people were trying to cancel him. And by the way, that's something I don't really understand is this cancel culture thing. Can the people that are doing the counts canceling, this is what I ask if you're one of those people, which I hope you aren't. The people doing the counts, the canceling, if you look back on your life, your entire life, is there nothing that you've done that, or maybe something that you've done that you aren't proud of? Uh, a big mistake that you made back in the day, something that you said that you regret, some, some action you took that you, just something you shouldn't do and something you aren't proud of. I feel like 99% of us would say, yes, there's stuff that I regret. There's mistakes that I, I made and I wish I didn't do that. So that, that's the thing that I don't quite understand with cancel culture is who can really look back and say they've never made a mistake or something that they uh, regret. So anyways, I digress. You guys get my point. So thank you everyone for tuning in to the, the Mission Driven Made podcast. I know the episode is a bit different today. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. And if you haven't, subscribe to Midweek Mind Pump. This is my new newsletter. You're going to get it sent every single Wednesday morning to your inbox. All it is is a thought-provoking question. That's it. It's going to take you about 30 seconds to read, and you can go on about your day. I didn't want to make a very long newsletter that you guys are going to delete and not want to read and just provide little to no value. So subscribe to Midweek Mind Pump. You can find that in the description here uh, in the podcast. All right, everyone, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your Monday. Can't wait to connect with all you guys soon. And until next time, everyone, stay mission-driven.